our life. Good, good. Uh, greetings to you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are together again, and I believe we're going to have a wonderful time in the presence of the Lord. This is the last day um, in, of the seven days, but we shall continue tomorrow and still under consecration and looking for answers from God. And I believe many of you already have overflowing testimonies. Your cup is full and running over. God says he will give you a good measure, um, pressed down, shaken together. The Bible says in John chapter 7, verse 37 um, and 38, it says, On the last day, in that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out and said, If any man thirsts, let him come and drink. So on the last day, again, the seventh day of the feast, God is calling that if anyone has a thirst, thirst is a painful desire. When you are thirsting for something, nothing can substitute what you are thirsting for. If you have a need that you want to get from God, nothing can substitute that need. You only need that power from God to answer you, to direct you, to bring results. I believe the message is a lot of results. There's a lot of tangible testimonies of what we have believed. And I'm going to be calling Pastor Mdoti, he's still logging in, he's going to be coming also to give you some energizers. Pastor Kumiso also sent his comment, which we're going to give you now. I called all these gifted men of God to help us, to support us, to challenge us, and to make sure we drive you to where you can receive something from God. Because no one must be empty-handed, everyone must have a portion. When this program is made, everyone must be in bed pains, pushing and getting something from God. So he's crying in the last day saying, if any man is at thirst, let him come. If you are thirsting for a touch from God, come to the living waters. My subject today is the tangible results of the intangible, meaning t touching what you could not see, what you are believing for. You embrace it. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews uh, uh, chapter 11, they saw the promises are far off and they embraced them and they confessed. And then God, uh, God made sure that they would get what they believed. Some died in faith. But now when you see your healing afar off and you embrace it, when you see the Holy Ghost baptism afar off and you embrace it, God will make sure you get it. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 1 verse 1, says that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have uh, seen with our eyes, and we have looked upon, and our hands have handled the word of life. The word of God and God was covering all space of time as the, uh, with attributes. He became the locus. He became that light. And finally, they could handle him. Finally, we could touch with the hands. When you believe for something, you must reach a time where you can handle and say, this is the results of faith. This is the results of prayer. This is the results of consecration. This is the results all over your life. All over your spiritual, your financial, your marriage, everywhere, there should be results that are tangible of this program. Now the Bible says in the book of Job, verse 42, chapter 42, verse 5, it says, I've heard of you by the hearing of an ear, but now I can see with, with my eyes. What Job heard, one day he saw it. One day you could handle it. What you have believed, brother, what you have desired, what you have read from the Bible must come out of the pages of the Bible and become tangible, something that you can touch and say, God is real. God is faithful. It can come out of the sermon, out of the Bible, out of the prayer program, out of your faith to precipitate and materialize that when the prophet believed for the squirrels, they, he could see them bleeding, he could touch them, he could eat them. Those who believe these things will eat and partake of them. When Daniel was praying, the angel came down to him and said, Fear not, Daniel, from the first day that you did set your heart to understand, to chasten thyself before God, thy words were heard, and I'm come for thy words. So God is saying, he has come for your words. He has come for your prayers. He has come for your consecration. You give yourself prayer, he has guaranteed the results. When you, have re when you are praying for something, results are guaranteed. You will never fail. Faith knows not defeat. When you believe for something, it doesn't matter how long it takes. It's going to materialize. The message is results with a cloud of witnesses of things that have been done by God. And what the Lord has done, 
We cannot tell it all. He has healed the sick. He has delivered the captives. He has said the lost. I've seen God opening blind eyes and deaf ears in revivers, raising people from wheelchairs and mending marriages that are broken and transforming the hardest lives and the stony hearts and changing financial situations, changing academic situations. And God he has no limit and you must never limit God. He is able to do it. And it's not secret what God can do in your life. What he has done for others, he will do for you. When we're at work there, we talk about a result-based management, where it's based on results. And Christianity must also have results. And my OTP is everything still going on very well. Um, if Christianity has results, it is encouraging. Your Christianity must not be a struggle with zero results. When you pray, something must be born from your prayer. You must pull it out of the pipe and say, where is the God of the pipe? Where is the God of Elijah? And then you find that the word is performative power. What you have read, you must handle it with your eyes. With your, with, with your hands. What you have seen with your eyes in the scripture, you must see a manifestation of what you have believed. And Faith produces the results through perseverance. Perseverance is faith's ultimate weapon. Um, I see Pastor Mdoti is already online now, and I'll, I'll be calling him just in about five minutes. We welcome you, Pastor Mdoti. I see he's online. He's going to energize us. He's a very great servant of God, and I've called him because I know when he shall speak, he shall, there shall be a lot of things happening. As an anointed servant of God. Now, uh, the Bible says about uh, Elizabeth that it's now six months with her that was called barren. Before God moved, she was called barren. But when God moved, he transformed the situation. Whatever the tag the devil had put in your life, you can reject the tag and God can change you. The prophet says about Mary, she went right about telling everybody she was going to have a baby and there wasn't a sign, nothing at all about it. She didn't have to have a sign. The only thing that she had to, was God's word. That's all we have to have. God said so, that settles it with me. What about you? Believe it. Take him at his word and say, it's so, and just go ahead. That's what we have to do we, to take his word. It's bound to bring it forth. Um, you believe it, my brother. Stay with it. Hallelujah. That's right. Stay with it. It will bring results every time. I've never seen it fail. When a true heart comes before God and meant business and took God at his word and started testifying about it, looking to the unseen, God's promises will always produce what is asked for. So don't allow the devil to rob you of what belongs to you. And in Revelation chapter 12, the dragon was waiting to devour the man child as soon as it was born. Sometimes when your testimony is being born, there are things that want to destroy it as soon as it is born, but hold on and say God will bring the results and faith will produce the results. And with God, nothing shall be impossible. Nothing can stand in the way of God's provision. We want to see the audacity of faith to stand and stand the challenge and defy the challenge and say God will make a way when there seems to be impossible, impossibilities crowding and surrounding you. You speak in faith and defy all defiance and say God will make a way even when there seems to be no way. Now, if you're a son of God, you are like God. He just speaks the word and it creates itself. His word is creative power. How did the world come here? He made it out of things that were not. And he said let there be. And he believed his own word. God believed his own word and you must believe his word. When, you, when there is nothing and you speak that, let there be. God will make sure it will materialize. Now the Bible says in Acts chapter 4 verse 13, when they, they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, and they marveled, and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Christ. Something, an atmosphere that they dwelt in. People could take knowledge that, no, this person must be results seen around us. When Jesus went back to Cana, where the first miracle happened, and the noble man, we had a, 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 child, a, a, a son who was sick, when he was talking to Christ, when he went home, he found results. When you are talking to Christ, when you are praying, when you are in service, when you go back home, you must find the results. When you got home, he asked that, what time did the child begin to amend? He was told that in the seventh hour. When we say seven, uh, uh, when uh, that seventh hour, things were happening because he was in service. When you are in service, things must start happening. 
There must be tangible results, something that you can touch and say, my God is real. Something that can materialize and your children know that we don't worship a dead God. Something that is visible, something that is tangible from invisible things, from things that are not. When Dagon fell down, when the temple, the Ark of the Covenant was in Dagon's temple, that power that could not be seen caused Dagon to fall down. The power of God that cannot be seen it, it will cause Dagon and demon powers and family spirits and poverty and the yoke of sin and the grudges and the power of darkness to fall down because there will be tangible results of the intangible. When Esther uh, and the maids, uh, they prayed and fasted three days, the king could not rest. He could not see, sleep because the results of prayer were taking. The results of prayer would take in everything that you are doing. It's never too late. When you believe God, you must know that you already have your answer in spiritual form, but it shall materialize and precipitate into tangible form. When you, when you believe the word, you already have your job in spiritual form, you already have your desire. It's like a child who is born. When a child is born, they have their hands, they have their eyes, they, have, they are a complete child, but they don't know that they have hands. But it happens that one day as they are playing, and then they, as they are busy playing and using their hands and not knowing that they have them, they discover their hands. And they say, what a great possession that I have. So one day you discover that the answer is already in you. Victory is already yours. The Holy Ghost is... One day you discover, the day you discover, you will see that you wasted many years when you already had. Now the Bible says, he gives the barren women a home and making her joyous mother of children. Praise the Lord. You can say, the, the, this picture I took it where they were saying this woman was uh, uh, barren for six years, then started with five children. You know, when, when you have been barren financial or spiritual, when it starts opening up, it must be a mighty breakthrough that covers all the lost years. Abraham and Sarah's body was transformed to meet the condition of the promised land. So God prepares your body to meet the condition of the promise. When Abraham believed God and he went to Mount Mora and prophesied in faith and said, we shall return with the child. He didn't know how. The how question was not his. When he just spoke those words, God created a lamb for Abraham. He provided a sacrifice. He became Jehovah Jireh. He gave him what he's desiring. When he, the ram was locked in thorns, sometimes when your answer is coming to you, it's locked somewhere. And you must take steps of faith and go and unlock where your answer, where your results are. And you unlock them and say, this is my answer. There must be a demonstration of power. How many knows what the gospel is? It's not in word only. The, it's not the word that the Bible on the gospel come to us, not in word only, but through power and manifestation of the Holy Ghost. The gospel is the power of God to make the word act what it said it will. If it said it will heal you, then it's going to heal you. When it says God will visit you, he's taking your address. He knows where you stay. He knows your desires. When Moses was associating with God in the mountain there, something was penetrating him. The results were coming. And he started, his face started shining because the power of God was penetrating him. The glory of God was overshadowing him. It was touching him. Now, your approach to a divine gift is what brings the results. It's the way you come to it. That's right. That's the way you approach it is what brings results. That's why I call Pastor Mdoti to just give us something. These gifted men of God, when they declare something, I know something is going to happen. I also asked Pastor Kumiso, he sent me a little clip that I will play maybe somewhere, just short 10 minutes, uh, when they recorded audio. Now, but um, something supernatural happens, as you can see here. Is that right? You receive physical results of supernatural action. Your faith is supernatural, but it has physical results. Your prayer is supernatural, but it has physical and spiritual results. All the armor of Christians, of joy, happiness, and what is supernatural. But that di any divine promise of God will bring results if it is placed on the right ground and watered with faith, prayer, trust. God shall bring it to pass. And I'm, say I'm saying with experience, you will see the word becoming flesh. Your prayer becoming material. Because, because you, are, you yes. are a child of God. Yes. You are a child of God. Mm. You are in Fear not. Yes. Just feel and see the salvation of the Lord. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is your creator. 
How mm. can he abandon you? Mm. It doesn't matter what you are trying to do. It doesn't mm. matter how hard it looks. God will make it come to pass. Hallelujah. God will make it come to pass because he is your father. He is your Lord. The great Jehovah. I have seen testimonies after testimonies. I have seen, I have heard testimonies. Sometimes you think, is this true? Was, was it really happening? Yes, it was happening. Testimonies are for people that, are, that have been sick. For example, I can give one testimony here. Shalom Pastor Mundoti. You know, my ministry is healing for the sick and praying for your needs. And I've seen it happening. Shalom Pastor Mundoti. Greetings in Jesus Christ. Sorry to trouble you late at night. By the way, people are phoning me in the middle of the night, two o'clock, three o'clock, one o'clock in the night. I wake up and I will answer the phone. I don't mind because I know it is not your fault. I know the devil thinks that ah, they are all asleep. I will wake up and pray for you. Hallelujah. We were all we are all happy and everyone was uh, now retiring to bed. Just then, our first daughter, Mona Lisa, Christine, 23 years old, started crying. Can you imagine a 23-year-old child, I mean sister, crying, started crying, claiming a sharp pain in her left side. Uh, side, uh, left, left side, heart, uh, the heart side, which is the heart mm -hmm. side. And we just take this. Remember, people are texting me, people are phoning me, and I will be just carrying on. I will not uh, be bothered with that. It is the left side, the heart side. Suddenly, she was losing energy and shivering, her temperature getting cold. My, after you made prayer with her, she just became normal. Soon after, that's what I'm talking about. After we just prayed, she became normal. We give all the glory to God. We give all the glory to God. Glory be to God. We would like to thank you for your support. We appreciate, Pastor. Indeed, even in these late hours, when you should be resting, may God bless you. And I'm saying, my brother, there are people that are seeking <laughs> and we know that God healeth. God will answer. God, just about a few days, I think three days ago, as um, a man called me, and uh, it, it was in the night. Again, it was in the night. You know, when. When, when, when someone was very rich and was not, not rich and they had kind of started, you know, pumping and trying to resuscitate. resuscitate. And I prayed for that person. And straight away, as soon as we were praying, he said, woke up. Shalom, person. 
We are asking, uh, we'll mute everyone and unmute you. There are some, want to mute everyone and unmute you so that nothing, uh, so that we don't have any disturbance. So we'll mute everyone so that person will be very clear. I, I, I believe so far people are being blessed and we are live in every platform. We had a network challenge, but at the end of it all, we're going to upload the whole video on YouTube and on uh, Facebook. But now, since we are live and people are hearing, now we come back to person. I think we have sorted the... You can unmute yourself, person, and continue. Person? Shalom? Is he hearing me? I, I can hear you. you. Yeah, good. Thank you. And become well. And I'm saying in your case, I've often said testimonies are not for those particular people that are that are that are that are sick or whatever problem they are. It is for you and me. You can pray and say to God, if this can happen to this person, why can it not happen to me? It can happen to you, it can happen to anyone. So I'm saying, whatever problems that you are encountering, if things are not moving well, if things are just binding and dragging and you know what, you can say, but if this happened, how can this thing not happen to me? And that is why we are giving these testimonies all the time. And we are saying, you should be able to be uh, given your heart desire. There are so many that I can give you tonight because God is the healer. God is the giver of all the good gifts. My brother, my sister, tonight as I am speaking, if you have a, a desire of anything that you want, just believe it in your heart and say, I want this. And I'll possibly ask you to write it in the end. And then I will pray for every written desire or whatever you want. And you will see what will happen if you only believe. If you only believe. I am saying unto you, for God is your redeemer. That is my title. For God is your redeemer. Your redeemer in every situation, not because you have been captured, but you have things that have been captured. You have things that have not been working. You have things that you are desiring to move in a certain direction and things have not been working and it has not been happening. And all you want is something to happen as soon as possible. And I'm saying to you, God will make sure it will happen if you only believe. Stop wondering how is it going to happen? Will this ever happen? Can you imagine? Can you imagine? God is not a man that you should imagine how things are going to work out. He is the creator of everything. So don't worry about that. But I can assure you, my brother, my sister, that Whatever, whatever you desire, whatever you desire, God will make it happen. And you see, sometimes when you are doing something and God tries to correct you and says, no, you cannot do this, try to do this. Many times I've, I've heard people say, oh, you know, Pastor, um, I was pregnant. Um, and uh, um, I've just lost the pregnancy. I've had a miscarriage. If you were sincere and you are sincere and you want God given child and then God allows that to happen, 
I asked one woman, I said, lady, sister, if what if that child was not a man of God and God is re realized that this was not going to be a good child for you and let me just take him away before he is even a person. So God is so, he is so good. He knows what's good for you. He would not even allow a situation to occur when he knows you are going to benefit. Sometimes the devil does that. Yes, I agree with you. But don't give fault to God. Why has this happened? Why has this happened? Sometimes you have asked God for something and it has not come the way you wanted. Maybe God knew that if it was going to happen that way, you were going to encounter certain problems ahead. So I'm saying to you, pray for every situation before you in, engage yourself in it. And when it is of God, God will let it happen. But if God doubts that it is not going to be good for you, he will change the direction. Sometimes he will make it not to happen. Hallelujah. You know what? My brother, my sister, sometimes when we are when we are when we are doing certain things or when we are desiring certain things, we are always trying to force matter to happen. But sometimes we must ask God, see what God says about it. If it is of good nature, if it is of good um, um, of, of good uh, future, then God will, will, will allow it to happen. Hallelujah. Sometimes um, a disease will come upon you. And upon that disease, God will be trying to demonstrate his power upon anyone else. And it comes as if it is a disease, deadly disease, and he allows that disease to come upon you. Oh God, why are you up here? Why have you allowed this to happen to me? Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Maybe when that disease is healed in a certain way, then it will teach each and every one of the children of God that no matter what you encounter, God will, will heal you. No matter what the disease is, no matter what the problem is, in the uh, in a in a in a in a in a message preached in fifty zero one zero zero diseases and afflictions, uh, the prophet says diseases and afflictions five zero zero one zero zero. I start on paragraph twenty three. Diseases and afflictions are all the result of sin. Yes? Okay? Maybe not in your life. You see what the prophet is saying? Maybe not in your life at all. But here it's, it, is, it is said diseases and afflictions are all the result of sin. But in your case, maybe not in your life. But in somebody's Life before you. The devil is the author of sickness and affliction. You hear that? Before we had any devil, we had no sickness or affliction. But when Satan came, he brought with him sickness and affliction. Hallelujah. There is no so many times that we refer to them as blessings. Oh, did you hear that? There is so many times that we refer to them as blessings. I never could think that God could get a blessing out of a sick person. Hallelujah. Someone might have been thinking, oh, how can Brother Mudochi speak like that? When I get got sick in you know, listen to what the prophet is saying. Listen to what the prophet is saying. My brother, my sister. <laughs> the 
There is a phone coming through, but I don't want to answer it. Must leave me alone. I don't want to start fighting with us. Right. How? How? There is so many times that we refer to them as blessing. I never could think that God could get a blessing out of a sick person. Unless it was a sinner driving him to God. Or a disobedient child bringing him back to be con reconciled to his father. But sicknesses are the results of the devil and of all the fall. Then, there you are. You see what the, the prophet is saying about this? Today we have the best doctor we have ever had. We got the best medical science. Best hospital we have ever had. And more sickness than we ever had. Now we have COVID. And all these cancers and all these diseases that are not cured, that are uncured. And in the day that when we have got the best medical sign we ever had. There are constantly building institutions for the incurable. Right when we got the best scientific work or affliction and sickness we ever heard. Building institutions yeah, for the incurable. You hear that? And imagine when the prophet was preaching this. I like that. I like this and I view these things in a very, very, very honorable way. Because I know the prophet was a man of God that was sent to us. You and me, we are so privileged to have the prophet with us. To have had the prophet in, the, in our midst. But there never was nothing that came before Jesus Christ. I'll repeat that. But there never was nothing that came before Jesus Christ. <laughs> the Son of God. But what he was more than a match for it. And he, he is just the same today as he was yesterday and it will never will will be forever and he proves that and you will see night after night and if it isn't so then you have a right to doubt someone say does the healing last <laughs> They last as long as faith lasts. I just want to dwell upon that a little bit. I receive hundreds of calls in a day. Even right now as I'm preaching, as you see me stretching my arm like that, I'm trying to switch off calls that are trying to, to come through to my phone because I'm using the phone as the, in the system. Someone says, does the healings last? And he says, they last as long as faith lasts. And I'm saying to you, in whatever desire you have, you must have faith for it. In whatever desire. I don't, I don't care what it is. I don't care how big it is. Even if, even if it is sickness. Even if it is a, a, a desire of a, of, a, of a house, marriage, uh, a, a career, or uh, whatever it is, 
you must have faith. Have faith. As long as that faith is there. But when faith fails, then your healing will fail. Would you say every person came uh, to the altar and got converted would be a Christian all their days? He, he could be tonight a child of God. And tomorrow be a child of the devil. You hear what the prophet is saying. Tonight you can be a child of God. Even speaking in tongues. But tomorrow be a child of the devil. It's when he loses faith in God. What sends him back? That's what sends him back when he loses faith. And I'm saying to you, my brother, my sister, have faith. For God is your redeemer. Don't just, don't just say, ah, I'm a child. How can this happen? How can, ah, you know, you know. Have faith. Say, I am a child of God. I want this to happen and I will not do this. I will not have this. I will have that. And it will come to pass. Hallelujah. And any power that could heal you here at this platform can keep you well. That's the reason I made this statement. That nothing comes here but what is delivered here. Outside here it's according to your faith whether it stays. So, you hear that? As long as your faith stays, then it will, lie. it will last. Then it will stick. Then it will stay. Hallelujah. I have seen people come to the platform totally blind. And read this same Bible. This same Bible. They will be reading. In less than five days. Come back again. Just as blind as they ever was. Why? Did they read? Did they read here? The power of the devil. Recognized, recognized that gift of God. And he had to leave. Right now, as you are in this atmosphere, the devil can recognize that gift of God. Hallelujah. Or when the gift of God, you are before a man of God, and the gift of God is upon that, and the devil will leave. He recognizes that. There are many times when I get to people myself, and before I even touch them or speak to them, they are manifesting. They are manifesting and so forth. Now, that's an all, oh, that's a, I know that's a real statement to make. But I know where I stand. And I know who I have believed. And I know his power to heal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what, my brother and my sister? Sometimes. You are giving God fault. Why am I not you? I, I have faith. I have faith. If you have faith of like a grain of sand, a grain, you can move mountains. You hear? <clears throat> Don't blame me to God and say, well, why has this happened? Why has this not happened? Why has this not happened? Have faith. For God is your redeemer. Have faith in God. Hallelujah. Paragraph 30. It says here. Someone said not long ago. When I was in Phoenix. Prayer life. Was. Uh, way down the streets. They couldn't even get into the auditorium. Going in the line. Someone say, Are, aren't you afraid, brother, brother? 
to stand there before all these things and um, realize that critics are standing there and newspaper reporters and so forth to criticize. Listen to me. Even yourself, if you know who you have believed, if you know what you, who is behind you, you do not even weigh a certain situation or a certain job or a certain thing. You know who you are standing with and who is standing with you. If God is with you, there is nothing, there is nothing, nothing you fear. Hallelujah. I said I'm not afraid as long as I is I feel that he is near. But if I can't feel him, I would get off the platform and go home. Hallelujah. Any man, no man can do nothing. All has to come from God. Did you hear? For God is your redeemer. Brother Branham says here, all has to come from God. I don't care how intelligent you might be even in class or in any situation. It, it has come to come. It has to come from God. For instance, we will take the to speak for a few moments about cancer. It seems to be one of the major enemies today. What is a cancer? Where did it come from? Tumor, cataract, ulcer, pneumonia, tuberculosis. All of those names are medical names. That medical sign get them. The Bible declares them to be devils. For instance, cancer. What is a cancer? It usually comes from a bruise. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I am saying to you, my brother, there are certain cancers that are in people's lives. Not physical cancer. There are certain special bruises that come in people's lives. And they have these cancers. And I'm saying to you, God is your redeemer. Worry not that this has happened. Oh, this I've heard people telling me, oh, I have an aunt who does not who does this? Oh, she's a witch. Or oh, they have this. Uh, they have done this to me. Let me tell you, my brother, my sister. There is nothing. There is nothing the devil can do if you are a child of God. For he is your redeemer. If we open the Bible in the book of in the book of uh, Numbers, I want to open the book of Numbers. Yeah. Bum, 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 bum. Don't worry. Don't worry. Things are all okay. Numbers. I'll read the book of Numbers. Numbers chapter 23. I'll start from verse 19. It says here, God is not a man 
that ye should lie. Neither the son of the man that ye should repent. If he said, and shall he not do it? Or if he spoke, and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he has blessed. There you are. And I cannot reverse it. He has not beheld iniquity in Jacob. Neither has he seen perverseness in Israel. Israel and Jacob is one person. It's you and me. Hallelujah. The Lord, his God, is with him. You hear me? He is with you and me. And the shout of the king is among them. God brought them out of Egypt. He brought you and me out of the world where we were being, you know, black people especially. They come from backgrounds that are so filled with all these ancestors and things. God brought them out of those things, out of Egypt. He is, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. Man, surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. There is, neither is there any divination against Israel. Once I'm still on that, how, how many calls I received. Oh, I've been with bewitched. I have, you know, my vessel. I did, you know, I did. If you become a child of God and you have been redeemed, and you have been redeemed, there is nothing those people can do to you. There is nothing they can do to you. The scripture here says, there is no enchantment against you. Jacob, you and me, neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, what God has wrought. What God has wrought. My brother, my sister, there is nothing this world can do to you. There is nothing if you have Jesus Christ on your side. If you have God in your as your redeemer, there is nothing the devil can do to you unless you faith with your with your, with your faith. Only believe. Only believe. Only believe. And there is nothing that is impossible. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My brother, my sister, and I'm saying to you, and I'm saying to you, all the nature, natural things of the earth type, the spiritual, that's what the prophet says in that um, paragraph I was reading. All the natural things of the, of the earth, type the spiritual. Everything in the natural types the spiritual. You know that? Most of you. Don't you ever be intimidated for God is your redeemer. He, have, he has already redeemed you. He has already done the work. And I can assure you tonight, and I want to say to you tonight, with these words, that there is nothing the devil can do to you as long as you are in Jesus' side and you are his child. Only remain in his bosom and he will make sure that nothing touches you. Only believe he is your child. I mean, you are his child. You are his child. You are a child of God. He is your redeemer. May God bless you all. It is just a small talk. I just thought I would exhort and encourage you, encourage somebody that they've been struggling, maybe thinking, oh, this 
can happen this certain remember god wants it to happen more than you want it more than you he wants it to happen only believe just have faith remember what i say i want ask you to write what you want pastor chitinde is always saying write but I'll, it's 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 perfectly all right you can write what you want and i will pray for you if you are sick touch where it is pain if you want something or if it is a child hold that child and i will hold my bible here and i'll give you few minutes to write just write what you want God is one. While is your writing? I'll read here in the book of Jonah. When Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly and said, I cried my reason of my affliction. unto the lord and he heard me out of the belly of, of hell cried i in the doubt hear this my voice did you hear that did you hear that john cried and he prayed and god heard him and i'm saying to you God will hear you and God will redeem you. God is your redeemer. He will give you your desire, your heart's desire. Remember, he is not a man that he should lie, neither a son of man that he would repent. For what he said will come to pass. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He will certainly make it come to pass. I hope everyone has written. Can I pray now? Our dear heavenly Father, as I put my hand on this Bible, I know there are sick people. Some have got pain here and there, and some have written their heart's desire. In whichever way, in whatever they want, they have asked you, Father. May you touch them. May you grant them. May you give them their heart's desire. The sick, may they be healed. Whatever sickness it is, leave the children of God now. Satan, you have no right. Depart from the children of God. I bind you and paralyze you in the name of Jesus Christ. You have no right to touch the anointed of God. The scripture clearly says, touch not my anointed. and do my prophets no harm you have no right to touch the children of god have nothing to do with the children of god right now leave satan i bind you and i'm saying to the children of god that have written all their hearts desire receive them may they be blessed may father may you bless each and every knot that has been written small knot has been written a request may it be granted lord may it be given their desire in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ as we are as i believe i leave them in your hands lord in jesus christ name amen amen hallelujah god bless you all thank you so much um sorry for the trouble we were trying to connect this and that you know with all these networks and what what of but all for the good may god bless you god bless you amen thank you person it was nugget after nugget and i want to thank the lord because many of the children of god turned up in numbers on facebook and on youtube and they are really enjoying i see so many comments so many people receiving and we are hitting nuggets i just enjoyed when i hearing you saying reading that quote saying 
God is more than a match for our situation. And God answers all our needs. Now, I've also written, and I believe everyone that has written will come with the testimonies. Some of you can even send your testimonies directly to Pastor Mdoti there so that you, you also know because we want tangible results. When we pray, we want to see results in the life of the children of God. Um, I've worked with him a long time and I know the grace of God in his life and in his ministry and uh, what God can do. That's why we had to join forces together as the gifted men of God to see results. Um, and I know, uh, as I have felt in my life, that even upon my requests that I've written, my testimonies are coming and your testimonies are coming. So this service has been power-packed. And um, some of you noticed that we had a youth meeting for about um, uh, three hours or so. We never fought too much on network. But when we change to something that has to deliver people are bound, the network is a battle. It's a war in the air there. But I thank God because the whole service is there. And uh, it's on YouTube. It's on uh, Facebook. But we'll also upload the smooth version, complete, continuous one. So that those ones, the complete version, will uh, upload it. But everything that Pastor Mdote has brought, we have it. So... I believe there shall be showers of blessings. There shall be testimonies flowing and flooding. Now, we don't want to waste much of your time. The atmosphere is too good to say a lot. Uh, may you go and receive as has been declared. What has been declared shall happen in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The title is also inspiring. It says, God is your Redeemer. God will bring you out of that situation. Thank you, person, for the short uh, quick work and the impact of the words that have been said. Um, maybe I'll give you uh, to just say goodbye to the saints as we log off. Back to you, Fundis. May God bless you all. May God bless you. May God grant you all your heart's desire. May God give you each and every one, whatever they have written, whatever they have put forward. May God bless. May God grant them in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Bye-bye. Good night. Thank you for this. All of you have been fasting and praying. Results are coming. May the Lord bless you. We will meet again tomorrow in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we are looking off now on Zoom and on YouTube. Uh, but tomorrow there is something special again. So come uh, log in tomorrow and see what the Lord has for us tomorrow. God richly bless you. Uh, good night. Amen. Amen. So I got